he took over the Walt Disney Company when technology was changing like never before. And in the last 15 years, as CEO, Bob Iger, has transformed the company into the largest, most respected media company in the world with properties like Pixar, Marvel, and 21st Century Fox. So now he's sharing the lessons he's learned in his new book called The Ride of a Lifetime. I got to talk with him about his journey, Steve Jobs, and his favorite Disney movie. You've been CEO of the Walt Disney Company for 15 years, and you write in your book that there are days where you still can't believe it. So what makes it so incredible for you? Well, obviously, having the opportunity to run one of the greatest companies in the world, an iconic brand, a company that is in the storytelling business and manufacturing fun. The company was founded by Walt Disney in 1923. All of those things are kind of pinch me elements to my job. The fact that I even got this far, starting off at the very beginning, you know, makes me deeply appreciative and still get kind of creates a sense of wonder within me. How did I ever do this? You started out working, you know, as a studio director. Did you ever imagine that this would be where you'd end up? No, not at all. I, I didn't have aspirations to become a CEO of a big company. <laughs> I just had aspirations to succeed. I didn't even know how to define that. But I certainly could not have envisioned having the chance to run Walt Disney. It's just, uh, you know, quite special in many respects. So I enjoyed in the book reading about the steps of your career, especially when you were asked to run ABC Entertainment, because you questioned if you could do it because you didn't have this specific experience. So how did you find that inner confidence to learn to trust your own instincts at that time and also going forward? Well, it was clear that if an opportunity came its way, if a door opened, that if I had uh, you know, an inability to walk through it or if I was timid or not sure of myself that the opportunity would never come my way. And so I just decided that I would, um, you know, put my head down and admit what I didn't know and work hard to learn fast. It's interesting in new roles you're often, you know, asked to be a leader of something when you don't know even anything about it. And sort of to get past sort of my own um, short what I what I perceive to be my own shortcomings or you know my own misgivings and and accept the opportunity and try to prove myself and that happened a number of times particularly when I went to ABC Entertainment. Gotcha and so of course we're here in the Bay Area and I want to ask you about the late Steve Jobs and you write about your relationship with him how it really evolved through the process of Disney buying Pixar can you talk with us about how the relationship between you guys started and then that moment that I think was so powerful that you shared with him in Emeryville before yes. you were set to announce the deal of Disney and Pixar Disney and Pixar had had a relationship when I became CEO but it had frayed and it was ending. They were co-partners in cr creating some of the you know, greatest films that had been made, starting with Toy Story in 1995. And Steve had announced that he was leaving the Disney relationship to go off on their own. Uh, I then became CEO, and one of the first things I wanted to do was to see whether I could salvage the relationship with Steve and with Pixar. And I initially brought up the concept of, of Apple, uh, creating for um, iTunes for, for television what he had done for music. In other words, a place you could go to see every television episode that had ever been made. And he asked me whether, if he did that, whether we would supply shows to that platform. And I said, absolutely. So he immediately uh, saw in me someone that respected Apple and respected technology and its place in, in, uh, in business and society and, and the intersection between technology and creativity. And I think that sort of changed the relationship. So when I became CEO finally at late 2005 and I broached the subject of buying Pixar, I was already coming from a place in Steve's mind uh, that he admired or at least respected and appreciated. And I did bring up buying Pixar. He said yes. We yeah. agreed to a $7.4 billion deal after months of negotiation and, and my gaining the approval of the board. Yeah. And then uh, just a, an hour before we were announcing the deal, he took me aside to give me a chance to back out of the deal by telling me that the cancer that he had had a few years earlier had come back and he wasn't sure how long he was going to live. And I opted not to, uh, not to accept his offer and go forward and he became our largest shareholder and uh, member of the board of Disney and Pixar continued on making great films and they also turned Disney animation around and the rest is history. Definitely. I think you share so many lessons in this book, but one of the ones that sticks out to me the most is innovate or die. Everything in this world is changing so quickly, so what would be your advice to someone who's just starting out? Well, exactly. The pace of change is just so rapid, 
and change is so profound and disruption of business models and our lives is so omnipresent that protecting the status quo is not a winning strategy. Being willing to uh, figure out ways to thrive uh, during a time of great change, which I guess in some ways is like saying uh, be willing to take risks because with change comes a lot of uncertainty, is clearly something that I would advise you know, many people to to do themselves. You know, don't try to protect the norm or status quo because there's something very temporary about it given all the change that we're experiencing.